Hey, 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 welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to get into a discussion about Mia Organics selling the company. Is it selling out or is it selling up like founder Monique Rodriguez thinks it is? Before we get into all of that, please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, that you hit the like button and the notification bell, all of those good things so you don't miss out on any more of my videos. So in mid-January, it was announced that Mia Organics partnered and sold the company to PNG, which is a major con conglomerate. PNG owns brands such as Always and Dove and many other big brands that we see everywhere in Walmart, Target, and all the good stuff. And after the announcement of this partnership, baby black Twitter and black TikTok were in an uproar. Many people feel like the selling of Miel is gentrifying the brand. As a matter of fact, people first began getting worried when famous TikToker, and by famous I mean 4 million followers, TikToker Alex Earl named one of Miel Organic's products in her top products of 2022. Alex referenced her use of the rosemary mint scalp oil and it contributed to hair growth for her in the past 30 days and baby when i say them comments was eating her up from and and not just the black community i'm talking about both sides white women were saying that it was not that that product was not for their hair and black women are saying oh here we go this is getting real reminiscent of shea moisture circle 2017 but after Alex's mention of this product, Miel Organics Scalp Oil specifically started to sell out within stores nationwide. So this makes me think too, this partnership didn't just happen out of the blue, but it is funny that Miel Organics partners with this major conglomerate weeks after they got a shout out from a major TikToker in a non-urban, we'll say in a non-urban demographic it does give me shea moisture and if y'all don't know what i'm talking about with shea moisture back in 2017 shea moisture partnered with omnilever they sold to to expand well shortly after their partnership with omnilever uh shea moisture's ads became a bit more whitewashed one of their most famous ads actually had three women of differing hair textures and skin tones but only one of these women were black and it's kind of ironic because Shea Moisture again was built up on the backs of black women let's just call it what it is in a world where natural hair products are somewhat of a commodity as women are leaving relaxers or and some are going back but whatever and trying to find better ways to take care of their hair with more natural and holistic products Brands like Shea Moisture, Cantu, Miel, uh, Aunt Jackie's, and you know, all these other black owned brands really took a boom. Which I said Cantu, but I'm not quite sure if Cantu's black owned. Save that for later. We'll, we'll have to pin and fact check that one. But in the case of Shea Moisture, it seemed as though once Shea Moisture got its mainstream acclaim and was picked up by this major conglomerate, they completely left the same women that made them noticeable to the conglomerate to begin with. Now, I'm not saying that there was any issue with Shea Moisture expanding their line to include other types of hair. However, how many white people do you know that are using Shea? I'm just saying. And instead of just expanding their line, maybe like how Pantene did, Pantene expanded their line to include, um, I don't know the name of it, but it's a whole different branding. It's chocolate, it's cocoa, it's like a cocoa, honey, something or another to expand to say our main demographic may be these women, but we have expanded to be able to include a line to include curlier textured hair. Shea Moisture didn't do that. They didn't go, oh, my target demographic are curly, curly coily kinky women is oh our hair products are for everybody and no hair products are for everybody side note while we're talking about curly coily and kinky make sure you check out my new merch the coily curly kinky headed cutie line we have a wide variety of merch honey that will 
that is specifically for my curly coolies and kinkies, okay? So I'm just saying, we, you know, we, we let you know who it's for off the bat. Check it out, link down below. So it does seem kind of strategic that right after the promotion of one of their products by Alex Earl, now we have the announcement of this acquisition of Myel into P&G. Things that make you go, hmm. And I can completely understand why PNG would want to break into the African American market. I mean, in 2017 alone, black women spent $473 million on hair care. Who's trying to leave $473 million on the table? I know I'm not. So this acquisition makes absolute sense for PNG, but does it make sense for Miel? Now, as a consumer, I completely understand the worry and the caution that is behind this acquisition completely because I do like Miel products. I actually have one of the twist out creams. I'm pretty sure I've used it on the channel before and it does really well. So I would be very disheartened if all of a sudden their formula changed like Shea Moisture did because Shea Moisture used to be top notch. Now the only thing I use from them are their baby products because the baby products are bomb but the hair products, <laughs> This whole controversy reminds me of the Honey Pot controversy. Uh, I think it was last year where people thought that she sold her company because of a change in ingredients. And what I will say is, I understand that ingredients have to change sometimes just so that you're able to create your product supply to meet demand. However, one thing uh, one thing that a lot of black women are looking for are, and are concerned about is the naturalness, the authenticity of products because that is what makes the difference in our hair and our hair health. If Miel is able to maintain the standards of ingredients that have all that we have already become accustomed to, then I'm not then I'm not upset with it. So I understand the concern and the outrage, but as a businesswoman, Miss Rodriguez, I ain't mad at you. What I think a lot of consumers fail to realize is that it is a lot to scale a business and to keep it afloat. It's a lot of money, and one thing about it, Miel has been growing rapidly. You can find them in Walmart, you can find them in Target, and of course countless beauty supply stores around the country. And that type of inventory is not easy to maintain all by yourself. While we're always talking about the black dollar and black business and wanting our people to excel in these type of ways, we have to be truthful. There is no way to have true sustaining success without reaching into other communities. Yes, it's very important to stay and start within your own community and to establish a nice foundation and base and mission so that it is understood who and what your target demographic is. However, when that's established, there's nothing wrong with getting some white dollars. Cause at the end of the day, honey, there really are no white dollars or black dollars, baby. It's all green. In order to scale nationwide and who knows, worldwide, you need big bucks and proper systems. And sometimes that's just beyond the average person's knowledge. And look at it this way, she's got she's gone really far. She's gotten really far with just her know-how. But what's the problem with partnering with people who can help you to get even further? Now Monique Rodriguez did make a statement. I'll insert a little clip of it here. First and foremost, I want to give God all the honor and glory. It is with great joy and excitement that I announced that Mayo has joined forces with P&G Beauty. I am so excited to continue furthering the mission and vision of Mayo, and that is to serve the underserved with high quality, innovative products. I have created this brand due to limited access to quality products for and in our community. My goal was to not only change that narrative, but to make sure that black women globally are able to access products that meets their needs. To join forces with a strategic partner to expand my brand globally has always been a dream of mine, and it has finally come true. I selected P&G because they believe in my vision, and they also support the passion that Melvin and I have for our community. And I also love how they have such diversity in their executive leadership team, in which you will see in the next slide. Those were some of the people who were behind the scenes who helped orchestrate this alliance. The science, technology, access to African-American chemists was super impressive and that also allows me to serve my customers with nothing but the best, which I have always committed to you guys. We have no plans to change the formulas and we will still continue to innovate and formulate 
as we always have. But now it's with even better resources. And she has made it clear that she will remain the CEO and the COO of the Miel brand. So what does that mean? If it means that she's going to maintain the structure, the ingredients, and the mission that has carried her to this point so far, I am all for it. If it means that she's not going to neglect her target demographic of black natural haired women, then honey, I am here for it. Now, if you start giving us the Shea Moisture Tees, honey, and stepping out and trying to be overly diverse while neglecting your target audience, then of course, I'm going to have to come back and I'm going to have to say something. Because let's be let's be real. How many white women are actually using a scalp oil? It's actually their goal to keep their scalps from getting oily. So unless she creates a completely different line that is catered to their hair type, I don't know how much expansion her baseline will have. I mean, honestly, is it possible for Miel to partner with PNG and to remain a Afrocentric inspired and focused brand and not trying to be so inclusive? Will she garner the profits that I'm sure PNG is expecting for her to have without compromising the women that helped her get there? I really, I truly do hope so. But I just came to say that I'm not mad at this acquisition. In fact, I think that it's a great thing. I would like for us as a community to stop looking at selling to conglomerates or partnering with conglomerates as selling out. For some reason, us in the black community are the only people that think that's selling out, baby. In the white community, they make businesses just so that they can sell them. Sometimes we're so narrow focused that we miss the big picture. This says, this lets other small businesses know that it is possible, that, that we are wanted, that our dollars are needed, that our hair is important, and this allows us to possibly get more black owned brands in more stores through dollars not of your own. So as of right now, I'm going to say <laughs> congratulations to Monique Rodriguez and those at the Mio Organics headquarters. I hope that you maintain your integrity and don't don't have us out here having to drag y'all, okay? Because baby, if I go and get my twist out cream and it ain't twisting out like it's supposed to twist out, then we're going to have an issue. But y'all let me know, what do you think about Neo selling to P&G? Are you happy um, that they have partnered with a bigger conglomerate? Are you upset? Are you are you worried that the ingredients may change? Are you still going to support the brand? If you can even find the brand in the stores, let me know all of that down below in the comments. And I will be back for another video soon and very soon. Remember to subscribe with the notification bell on, like, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace. Thank you for joining me for another video. If you would like access to the full video, become a beauty by joining the membership. Take a look around my website to see all the services that I offer. Then click the join today button to receive access to live streams, member only content, beauty community posts, and producer credit. Thank you to all the beauties that have supported me thus far and all the beauties that are joining each day. Follow me on all socials, link in the D-Box. See you next time. Peace.